My parents moved to the north of Pretoria shortly after my birth, and I grew up in a very conservative community. And when I say to you we happily lived apartheid, I really mean that. So very ignorant like that. You, you won't be surprised then when I tell you the first time I heard Nelson Mandela's name was the day he was released. So you'll be surprised then that I applied for a job in 1994 in the presidency or in Jay Naidu's office. Two, two hours later they called me and they said, would you be interested in a job in President Mandela's private office? I never imagined as a typist that I would ever meet the president. Suddenly I found myself standing in front of the man my father warned me against extending his hand and he wanted to greet me. The first thing you noticed about Nelson Mandela was the sincerity in his eyes, the kindness on his face, and that infectious smile of his. He extended his hand and he's waiting for me to reciprocate and I decided, well, I don't have a choice, I'll do this. But then I realized he was conversing with me and I couldn't understand him and I said, um, excuse me, Mr. President, for him to repeat himself. And only when he repeated himself, I realized he was speaking to me in Afrikaans. So you feel like an idiot, you feel like an idiot, and it's not that his Afrikaans was not good, it's that the last thing my brain expects is that my people, my, that my language, the language of my people, that this man would speak that la language. And I heard him say over the years that when you speak to a man, you speak to his head. But when you speak to a man in his language, you speak to his heart. And that's exactly what he did that day, destroyed my defenses. I started feeling guilty, I started feeling responsible. He was conversing with me, inquiring about my family, asking about my parents, about my upbringing, my brother really interested in me. I felt respected that moment. I also started crying. That's what women do best in situations like that. <laughs> I wanted to apologize. I wanted to say, can I do something for you to, to, to try and repay what my people have done to you? And um, when I cried, of course, the president said, no, 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 relax, you're overreacting. So I had to compose myself. <laughs> but that really made me realize that, you know, I need to become a participant in this country. I need to try and do whatever I can in my little way, as a typist, to try and do something for this country. Madiba wanted to show the world that going forward, as long as you bought into the ideals of a new democratic, equal society in South Africa. There was going to be space for everyone. Now, after 19 years, there's obviously many lessons I've learned from Adiba, and inevitably people always ask me, what are the important things you've learned from him? And I summarize them in three categories, and the one is about discipline, the other one about respect, and the last one about integrity. And these are lessons that you can apply not only in, in, in your working environment, but in personal life as well. The first is, you never allow the enemy to determine the grounds for battle. That's what he did. By greeting them first, by shaking hands with them, he neutralized that courtroom. The second thing he said is, the way you approach a person will determine how that person treats you. And again, greeting them, it threw them off guard completely, caught them off guard completely, because they didn't know how to deal with him. They expected him to be angry. So those are the two things about respect that I can highlight. So that is really for me the most important thing of, or, or, or the, the really the important thing of his character was that respect, the fact that he could respect from the security guard to a president equally. That made people feel special. It's not difficult for us to apply that in everyday life and we'll make South, not only South Africa, our own lives so much better if we just try and do that. Madiba left the hotel and the strange thing is he didn't touch any of those items. He didn't open it. He didn't use it. He wanted to show or leave an image to the hosts. Thank you for the hospitality, but I brought my own toiletries. I didn't need yours. yours. <laughs> he also didn't mind you taking the, your own stuff from your bathroom. Um, I'm a confessed, self-confessed shower cap thief. Um, he didn't mind you doing that, but not from his bathroom. Someone was not to be trusted because this is the image he wanted to leave for the hosts. And then people ask me, what would Madiba have said about corruption? And I say to them, I don't know, and I can't put words in his mouth. But if that's how he felt about a stolen bar of soap, draw your own conclusions. Yet, the thing I heard him say most often over the years is, it's easier to change others than it is to change yourself. He said on many occasions that he had to change himself and work very hard at himself to be able to forgive after he was released. And if forgiveness is a choice,
then I believe optimism is a choice. These values are not, e are not difficult to emulate. Um, discipline, integrity, um, and respect, they are not difficult. Madiba just tried harder for me than most of us. So for me, what is important is that we go back to what Madiba said. It's easier to change others than it is to change yourself. How difficult is it to stop smoking, to lose weight, to stop swearing, whatever it is you want to change about yourself. Yet we want to change everyone around us every day. And Nelson Mandela realized that he had to work at himself more than focusing on other people, you know, trying to change other people. So that is what, what that quote really says to me. If we are dedicated, loyal, committed to a better future by making choices every day to advance the lives of those around us, and not only our own lives, we can contribute to a better country for everyone. But it is in everyone's ability to aspire to greatness. We get sidetracked by everyday life, but change starts with us. Thank you very much for listening, and thank you once again for inviting me. Thanks.